I just got off a very exciting phone call. And this woman I was talking to happens to be a coach. So she really understands the dimension of maybe perfection with Jesus is staying teachable, is staying coachable. That's how we win the war. We stay teachable and we stay coachable. And we were talking about the dimension of lust versus the dimension of love. Satan's dimension of vice and lust, all the lust of the flesh, no matter what it is, you know, whether whether it's just being greedy for gain, like the virgins with no oil, and constantly pulling a gun on others to give oil to you because you don't get any. A double-minded man receives nothing from the Lord. There's a great scripture about that too. Um, I went by the field of the slothful, the ones void of understanding, the ones that can't tell themselves the truth or the Lord the truth when they walk after the flesh, <laughs> when they're in the dimension of Satan, the, the father of lust. They can't tell themselves the truth when they're using movies to just check out, when they're using food or drugs or pot or whatever the deal is. Because there's about 50,000 things you can walk after the flesh with. The list is long. <laughs> so there's two dimensions. Jesus is the bread of life. He's the word of life. And he's the dimension of life and light. So people that can't even tell themselves the truth about when they fall, nor will they go to the Father and say, I fell down, I need a Band-Aid. They don't even get any help. And so we were talking about, that there's a deep scripture in the Proverbs that says, reproof and correction is a path of life. And those that despise reproof and correction are not only go astray, they are the path of ruin. And if we don't ever look at the ruination trail that we've created in the dimension of lust, the lust of the flesh, we, we can't be forgiven much and we can't love much and we can't stay teachable. Only those who are willing to tell the good father the truth about their conscience and their battle between the flesh and the spirit aren't going to vex people all the time in the dimension of lust. There's a great another great proverb about that. It says, those that deny things falsely feed on the winds. Every de demon in hell talks to them. In a land that's trodden, which is their soul, they travel thirsty and they don't gain anything. And there's another one that Job says, uh, the things my soul refuses to touch, the vices, the lusts of the flesh, the things I inoculate myself up with to be a sleepwalker, that I can't help other people out of the dimension of the darkness of lust, because a lot of people are going down. Why does the path that leads to destruction? There's a lot of people on it. So if you don't understand it yourself, you can't be your brother's keeper. It's a lot like Cain. Cain lived in the dimension of the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. So he couldn't be his brother's keeper. There was no relationship with the father in the dimension of lust. It's actually what happened with Adam and Eve. They left off their relationship with Jesus in the garden to go into a dimension of darkness. The vices, the takedowns, it doesn't matter what the takedown is. For some people, it's just romance novels or, or sports. Anything that's a vice that you're using to save your soul and you're not going to the savior of souls and the maker of your soul is a, is a takedown in a dimension of lust. So people travel with a dumb spirit. They play dumb. I went by the field of the slothful, the one void of understanding because they don't tell the truth about their conscience war. They accuse people and excuse themselves. That talks about that in Romans. People that are walking in a dimension, Satan's dimension of lust of the flesh, the potheads, the drug addicts, the you know the sex addicts, the sports addicts, whatever the addiction is, those that go. I went by the field of the slothful, the one void of understanding, the one void of a relationship with the Father and the coach of life that could give him a, a bar of gold. Because every trial isn't because of God, it's because of our own lusts of the flesh, which are many. So Jesus isn't the one that 
tries us, the devil does. And if we're going to go into the dimension of lustville and not really care who we're taking down in the dimension of lust, we're just going to be dumb airheads that walk through life, taking each other down, you know, we're, we're not gaining anything. So every trial is a trial that we could buy gold in. Every time we give into the flesh and let the flesh baby whirl, that wants to give us binkies and blankies and, and vices that put us to sleep spiritually. There's always wisdom and understanding and knowledge to be gained from it. And then we can have fellowship with each other, right? Because the Lord's like a refiner's fire and a fuller soap. And those that feared the Lord, that maybe the lust of the flesh, we're going to put them to sleep and take them to hell and they'll be virgins without any oil. Those that feared the Lord <laughs> spoke often to each other. They gave each other the game plan. I did a little video last night about war plan, about walls, you know, the walls of God that protect us. But if you kind of see the devil like a little tiny fire in your living room that you got a cage every day so it doesn't burn the house down, <laughs> you, know, you, you can put bricks around that tiny little fire and you've contained it, right? So every day is a, another day to up our game in containing the dimension of darkness and the lusts and vices of the flesh. Man, and if you haven't read the, the scriptures on self-control, they're powerful. I was, I was reading them this morning. I'm going to end this now. Amen.